As we enter into the fray with everyone entering inside of this household, one belonging to the Bishop of State, Q and her father spoke for a while. After entering inside this town, you encountered a few people. One was a mysterious stranger that was to assist you, but ultimately he was weird, so you decided not to listen to him. It was known as Vash, and without him, you basically said, yeah, let's not deal with this person. Um, him and his team are currently still occupying the area where you first entered inside. If you want to speak with him, he'll be there. But the main person that kind of bugged you was Mag Magnus. Him and his team managed to not not notice you guys spraying them in the face and not realize that you guys were doing something to them. So things arose and Vash was called in, but ultimately you were told um, after Vash sent something with Bishop scrying on her to go and proceed and speak with the captain upon entering inside the city. Upon entering inside the city, you just decided to go into the middle of town, make a plan, and then head towards the Bishop's state, where beforehand you encountered a woman bard talking about <clears throat> some strange sound that some of you were hearing in the distance. And she was letting note of the guards that it was getting closer. The guards were hearing none of it, so you basically said, Hey guards, go that way. Um, woman, whose name I don't believe you've ever asked, so I'll just nope. call her a woman for now. Go to my house, is what Q said, um, but first get your stuff. That might come up later. Uh, beforehand, though, the strange sound came closer enough, close enough that you can see a giant <coughs> mechanical bull attacking the main lot of you. While its frame was weak, it was a very large creature, so it did destroy a good amount of a china shop beforehand. Uh, luckily enough, you managed to save the man and destroy the bull. You cracked the strange gemstone and then heading, uh, once acquiring that, stealing it, and then leaving the area before the scientists came in that are recently new to this area. You went towards the bishop estate and then, with little to no words, Q learned that her younger, because I thought he was older, but I guess not, brother is now no. back to life. Yeah, she's the older Her of the father twins. did something to do this. Why this happened? Well, apparently it happened when Q was no longer an Echo Knight, so that might have a correlation. But neither he or there currently. And afterwards, Q called upon the Queen of Ice. Deciding on what to do while they're taking control of her body and going on a killing spree. Going to speak with the town clergyman uh, and seeking judgment and <coughs> death upon the current heads of the house, making Q the next heir. Or a, for a third reason, I don't know why I said fourth, which I currently can't remember, but it had something to do with magic. Cut the tie, cut uh, uh, the thing that was tied to the father away. All oh, right, right, right. Uh, magically unbinding the thing within the father. But he had already made a decision. He probably would make the same. So it's not really. Mm. That wasn't an option. So Maybe option two was chosen, it. and a giant Ooh. ice cage then surrounded the area, blocking off most of the team from each other. It is not currently <clears throat> surrounding you. It is currently surrounding you, rather, but it is not collapsing into you it is just simply holding you there right now the team is stuck in a rock in a hard place made of ice but you can see that the other people that are not part of your group that are in this house their cages are closing in i want everyone to go ahead and roll a turn order and i forgot this song had several breaks so i'm just gonna go with regular escape <clears throat> All right. Uh, we're missing one of you, Huntsman. It's me. My uh, my browser <laughs> just crashed. I'm trying to reopen. Okay. I mean, I was having computer problems yesterday, so it's fair to say someone else can.
All right, let's see here. They didn't roll that well. Mm, they didn't roll that well either, but it's better than that one. Cerulean rolled eh, fairly well. Zen also rolled pretty well. Let's see here. The brother rolled an 11. The father rolled a 13. And I should probably just not say these out loud anyways. And just put the numbers in. But I don't like static sound. So I continue to speak. Really? The old man rolled higher than most of you? I blame the sudden ice cage. That's fair, I guess. He has no dex modifier. Yeah, but he's clearly seen this before. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, well, unfortunately, the old man is not exactly what I would call a spry chicken, nor is he a magician. Uh, he's an engineer, currently from the scientist organization that entered inside the city. So they're currently taking a chisel and hammer and trying to smash through the ice. Uh, I will use... Our... No, no, yeah, I'll use Arcana uh, to base his Fulcrum leverage point. I clearly made that up, kind of. I know there's something to do with that. Uh, plus 8, 16. You can see the old man spike into the ice to a point where it is almost cracking and fissuring through. However, it does not crack, crack completely, but it does give a chance for the scholar slash actual wizard on their turn to do something about it. Zen on her turn looks around, takes out her giant spike weapon, looks around and then just pierces through the veil in between Zold and herself. Let's see here. Da, da, da. Manages to smash, smash in, cracking the ice and then just breaking it through. Currently the uh, Zold and Zen have a 10 foot gap of space to move through. Zold. Uh, so that gap is like here or where's that at? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so with that, would I be able to misty step to here? Uh, Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Ice cage. Yes. And I will shoot the father twice. All right. Both of those hit. Jesus Christ. Hans. Sometimes you gotta pop a fool. <laughs> Taking out your rifle, you manage to sn sneak behind him in a quick flash of non-movement, because that's basically what you were doing. Popping it from one direction to another, you wind up behind him and take two barreled shot to his back. He does sustain a good amount of damage, not enough to get him bloodied, but enough to realize that he needs to watch his back, his flank, his six, and whatever term I'm currently forgetting. Ass. <laughs> it's technically true. And also a good turn. Anything else, uh, end, yep. end of turn. Q. Uh, and there, is he in the same section as me, or is he blocked off from me? He's currently blocked off from you. Uh, unfortunately, thanks to Zold being there, uh, that's the amount of space that can currently occupy two people. Unless you can somehow get in and then get out, I think, within a turn. Well, 
father, you did this to yourself. And then I'm gonna take my mace and try and shatter the ice around me. All right. Go ahead and roll. You grab your mace and slash straight in, bash straight into it. It's a mace, not blade. Um, it hits it, but it does not completely crack it. It is enough to cause some small fissures, but it is not enough damage to completely shatter through. I know some of you... <clears throat> Sorry. I know some of you guys might not want to be here in a little bit, so if y'all if y'all want to get out, you can. And, uh... The, uh... <clears throat> How much space is where I'm at? Uh, currently, there's 10 feet around you you can move. You just can't really get out of that range point. So if I... I'm, I'm trying to think is if I thunderstep... Because I think thunder... No, never mind. It's an action. I thought thunderstep was a bonus action. That's missy step. <clears throat> right. Alright, yeah, I'm just... That's it. Well, mm -hmm. actually, no. I'm going to... No, I... That's an action, too. Uh... I'm going to bonus action hex <clears throat> my father. Okay. Um, he has uh, uh, let's see, uh, disadvantage on wisdom saves. It's only checks. I mean checks. Was no okay. Uh, strength checks then. <clears throat> okay. Well, so everybody's currently looking around, making sure that you guys aren't in trouble. But you can see Zen's trying to break through the ice system. So, in turn, she tries to break from the other direction. Uh. Oh, man. She actually has attacks prepared, but... Unfortunately, she has a tax repair that forced people to <laughs> roll saves. Uh, Ray, Zen. Yeah, just Ray and Zen. Go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw. Q's fine and Morthos is fine. So that's one for Ray, and I will roll one for Zen. 27. <clears throat> All right. She begins to bring out a wand, similarly enough, looks like shattered glass, uh, black and ember hue. She then, fl not flips it, but basically whips it towards the ice and immediately shatters into pieces. However, they the pieces sustain in the air, surround behind her, and she flings her hand forwards, causing the shattered glass to pierce through the veil. <clears throat> it goes through the first wall, and then through the second wall, and then pierces through and hits this man. However, the amount of wave that hits is enough to open up a good amount of space. Currently, this much. Unfortunately, though, it's also a very strong <laughs> attack. So, unfortunately, Ray did not pass. Uh, Technically, Zen did, unfortunately. That is 5d10 plus 2 slashing damage. As the glass just basically cuts through anything that's surrounding the area. She then moves forward, getting closer to the team. Let's see, the father then looks at the situation. <clears throat> Doesn't really care for the enemy uh, cause an ambulance that you can probably hear by now. And it's gone. Uh, and then it begins to glow an immediate red hue. Immediately surrounding him and near Zold, you see a strange creature sum summoned out of nowhere. Uh, it doesn't take Zold that much to realize that a portal was sent for a brief second there. 
and now he's kind of technically flanked on both sides. The spirit or apparition is able to <clears throat> end their turn within an enemy or ally's space, which is unfortunate for you. <laughs> and then begins to move straight towards Zold and then begins to try to grapple him around the neck. A chokehold, if you will. Zold, I want you to go ahead and roll athletics versus... No, wait. Uh, da, 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 ethereal plane entering inside. Um, roll an intelligence save? Okay. Uh, you can tell that this thing is going straight for your neck. However, you can tell that this thing isn't physically more or less there, but it can still mess with you. So you move immediately to the side and then it grasps straight for you. And in that brief instance, it just uh, swipes at you with its thumb, uh, scrapes your side. And for a brief instance, you felt your soul just slip away from your body and then slip right back up because it managed not to hold onto you. On that same turn, you see the father then look towards Q, and then it br he brings out what appears to be a large greatsword. Aiming straight for Q. He says something. Uh, Q, you are technically able to hear it. Uh, you can now tell Zold that you really I can can't... read lips. Yeah, you can read it. Um, but more than likely, Q and Zold, you can now tell that speaking between the cages is kind of hard uh, but he does state very well then seems to me that you do not want to listen he goes straight for the attack and then rolls a two uh, bashes into the shell but it is not breaking just yet Marthos I'm uh, gonna put like a peep in pocket or something mm -hmm. for the moment. And then reaching into my bag of holding, I am going to pull out the hydraulic arm. You managed to pull out the hydraulic arm without an issue. And put that on. And you put it's it like, on if it's like a glove. It's just very bulky and large. So my strength modifier right now is a plus eight. Indeed. Um, and I'm going to smash, try and smash through this. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead and roll athletics. All right, so this is plus four more. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> 31. 31 does hit. You manage to grab onto the arm, place it upon your own, and then smash straight through, almost hitting Zen. You rolled high enough that I'm not going to make you hurt your team members. But you smash straight through and now are connected with... Uh, Ray, Zen, Cerulean, and that one guy who you do not know who that is. Uh, technically, do I get to attack twice? Since I have the... No, that's only a pack up and never mind. I mean, if you have, you have the attack at that, if you have that, uh, uh, evocation, it allows you to attack with anything twice, weapon-wise. Oh, yeah. Point. So I'm just going to go straight for the next one. Move up here and try and hit this wall. All right. <clears throat> Plus four. That's 30. That's 30. And that does hit as well. You managed to then bum rush straight through. Uh, go around Zen instead of just hitting her with a hand. Uh, waving her off would probably hurt a lot. Uh, and then smash into the next wall. We were rolled high enough and well enough that I'm not going to say you pepper Q with ice. 
But you do enough damage that it crosses through into the next portion of ice section. Currently, everyone but Zold is together. So that means that the father's in my section now, is he or no? No. Okay. Uh, let me represent it better. Uh, oops, that's the wrong item. There we go. Alright. Probably just put the arm away. Alright, you All right. put the arm away not wanting it to be stolen. Probably. No, that's quite useful. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the guards outside realize that the entire estate is now formed a giant ice pillar system. Uh, they begin to try to crack through the opening door. Uh, this guy's behind them. Uh, see, they <laughs> only have a plus two. Oh, one of them has a plus three. Nice. 17, 10, 21, and 19. Oh, they all, except for one, did pretty well. Uh, they almost get the entire door cracked. However, that one that missed uh, with a 10 just barely misses, and it is like a super thin point that is almost uh, tin foil at that point. <laughs> More or less. You can see that the brother is currently trying to speak with your team, uh, Morthos. Uh, Q, you can see something in the distance, but based on the description you gave last week, you don't care. Uh, Zol, do you know how to lip read? Um, no, I did not. I Believe it or not, I do not actually have the observant feet. Oh, okay. Uh, I, thank you. I also forgot the name of the feet. Uh, so they're saying something, and that's it for their turn. The guardian that seems to be teaching the child magic, well, not a child anymore, uh, his student magic then looks and turns towards you, realizes that you're a threat to the people inside this house. They don't cast anything on you. But they do cast something straight towards the wall that the old man was trying to break. Easily enough, because the old man did more or less okay, uh, shatters through. You can see that the uh, magic individual casts some type of magic missile spell, shattering straight through the next system. And shatters a little bit more of the next one, making it easier for the next pattern. Right. Uh, am I encased in ice or anything at all? Currently, um, thanks to Morthos, we... you basically got a very wide room now. Anything in green that you're currently connected to, and anything green that's connected to anything green, is an open space you can walk through. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Major Armor on myself. Mm-hmm. And I believe that'll be it for me. All right. The strange individual man that uh, was here to discuss something with Q's father realizes that you are attacking the estate. Uh, so they run forwards, bringing out what appears to be a large sword set on fire. They look straight towards you and then fling the blade directly at you. They don't toss it, more or less... Um, have you ever seen anything with elemental weapons cross the blade in through the air and the flames continue forwards? Uh, they say something around the lines of, I don't know who you are, but you are not welcome in the Bishop Estate. The flames cut straight towards all of you, and I want you to go ahead and roll deck saving throws. Uh, oh. However, the initial strike goes straight towards Cerulean. Ray, you were saying? No, not again. <laughs> At least it wasn't a teammate this time. Wait, well, he's uh, like some sort of. He's, he's my getting boss. all of this. 
Uh, no, just the people within his own square. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's my boss. Uh, no, he's a boss within your organization, but he is not your boss, boss. Oh, okay. I thought he is your good, superior, sorry. but he is not the leader. He's not my commanding officer. Correct. Gotcha. Uh, da, 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 da. That's not great. Now NPC rolls. Okay, Zen ah. failed this time, but Cerulean's fine. And uh, after including their modifiers, you see a bladed weapon go directly at you. Cerulean uh, does well enough to defend herself. She does take two d10. Uh, plus five points of slashing damage as the bladed weapon barrels into her. Then the flames <laughs> cut through. Everyone else simply takes half of 2d10 uh, plus nothing. Except for Morthos and Zen, who take the full six points. I rolled very low. No, I still take half because it's fire. All right. I always forget that. I don't know how I keep forgetting <laughs> that. My character doesn't look like a normal tiefling. That's yeah, fair. I was just thinking that. Doesn't look like a horny bitch. True. Uh, the old man know. then looks straight towards the sun. He's saying something, but he can't hear it, so he tries to break a fulcrum point in this direction. I am using the wrong terminology, but right now I am trying to get through all the NPC turns without going crazy. Uh, 11, it's not enough to break through, but makes it easier for the next go around. Zen then looks around, realizes that people are hurt, uh, goes over towards Ray and casts Healing Word, dealing 2d8 plus 7 points of health back. Oh, wow, I rolled high. Uh, 20. Zold. Okay. Um, does the, uh, does the weird thing behind me look like it's gonna, like, try and drag me into the ether again? Oh, more than likely, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna try and get my hits in where I, when I, while I can. Uh, with, with a quick spin, uh, of the rifle, I'm gonna try to, uh, sweep father's legs from under him and knock him prone. All right. If he's using strength, he has disadvantage because Hugh has hexed him. Let's see here. He has fought against the warlock before, but it is honestly better with his athletics. So he will have disadvantage. Okay, rolling two dice, one and a two. I rolled well. That is really well. You try to sweep uh, him behind his not behind him through his legs, however, you just basically kick his feet. They're about as sturdy as a trunk and a tree. You can tell that this man has fought in wars. And fought the good fight. Maybe not now, but before. I will attempt to do it again. As Just motorcycles rush through angle. the area, you begin to distract them enough to swing again. Okay, I'm going to attempt my fate again. 14. <sighs> okay. Knocked prone. I will reveal the death gun. Mm. All right. I'm assuming you had um, multi attack. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Extra attack Rangers, one. Rangers have uh, multi uh, extra attack one from uh, level five. Yeah. Uh, advantage now because he's prone, and I will make my shots. One, two, three. Four, five, 
six. Nine. Ten. Holy shit. Uh, after that, don't forget to roll a d20, because you completely emptied the clip. Yep. Okay. Uh, it does seem to have fractured a bit. I would suggest getting it repaired. Uh, but 26 hits, 24 hits, 20 hits, 20 hits, 27 obviously hits, 24 hits, 24 hits, 17 misses, and 21 hits. Wow, that's a lot of hits. Should have eight minutes? Yep. Yes. Yeah. I probably should just told you the total. Twenty. Six. Six. All right. Twenty. Forty. Six. Oh, okay. Thank you. As he becomes, f as he hits the ground, almost in a bouncing-like motion, immediately Zold takes out the hand pistol, and then pops continuous shots into him. As he falls again for the second time after the initial sounding boom of the gun, he hits the ground and he does not get back up. However, you can tell that the strange apparatus, a uh, spiritual-like creature, does not leave. However, it's no longer controlled or tethered to the old man. Oh wow, well, father's- oh, in that case, my hex moves to the creature. It immediately dissolves away. The hex does? Yes. It connects to it, and then immediately gets engulfed. Ooh, that's yikes. Oh, but yeah, that's the end of my turn. Okay. You. Zold, get out of there. <laughs> it's time to leave, and I'll cast Banishment on the creature. Um, let's see here. I believe I need to make a save. It is a Charisma saving throw of 7. Okay, unfortunately for it, it is not very charismatic. You said 17, right? Not 7? Yeah, 17. Okay, I heard 7. Nope, okay. that'd be horrible saving throw. It has no charisma. In fact, I, it should have negative, but it does not. So it's just a complete and total d20. Uh, hope for the best, or Zold might <sighs> die. <laughs> okay, uh, meets, it hey, beats. Zold, you got any luck? I do have luck. Make it reroll. Make it reroll uh, and make it roll higher. Can, can I? Um, I think certain attributes allows that, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, let's see. I don't think I can. I think I can only make things reroll their attacks. You can also on an attack roll made against you. It's attacks. I Once the outcome of the roll points each can okay. Yeah, it's only when uh, it's only an attack when roll is made against me. Roll. Makes sense. Uh, bummer. Well, you have this thing to contend with, or maybe cast another banishing spell. Uh, anything else, Q? I can't. I use my action to cast banishment. Can I use my bonus action to try to bust through? Um, It's not really weakened, but you could probably use your bonus action to weaken it a little. I mean, the in between me and the father were weakened because I hit it, he hit it. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, roll a d8. Four. Uh, that's not polarizing enough. Roll again. Okay, that works better. Uh, I just needed a number between uh, one, eight, and four, but you got it directly in four. Uh. You look at that, realize that that is a problem. You take the butt of your hilt of weapon, I forget which one you have. Mace. Mace. And then just bash in straight through the wall of ice. 
the wall falls down, but now you have a ghost in between a rock and a hard place and the rest of your group. But I, I do say, everyone, Lee, get out now. You have your ways. And I'm gonna step on my father's corpse and get right next to Zold and say, uh, in a second, we're gonna get out if everybody else leaves. All right. See, Cerulean looking at the situation did not bring any teleportation or transport magic abilities. She brought weapons. Huh. You tell her, okay. get prepared for a fight, and you tell her then to leave. I mean, I never said get prepared for a fight for this. Ah, it was more or less the interpretation of what she gathered. Uh, okay, um... She can't teleport, but she'll try to barrage through and probably break the easternmost wall next to her. Yeah, Ray. That's quite right. Uh, more or less. Looking at the surrounding area, she does bring out another wand. This one seems to be uh, more or less the fire wand you've seen before. However, this has a modification with a crimson eye of the dragon statue-ish thing. I think it's called an emboss or an imprint. Uh, either way, I'm bad with art terminology. She shines it straight towards this area where the man is and almost like a static lightning bolt, a static lightning bolt actually goes through the wand, breaks through and hits the man, goes through this wall and then turns to fire. The fire then resembles a dragon as it's burrowing through the man. Uh, let's see here. Unfortunately, it also does damage to the holder, but it's a very strong wand. That is a lot of damage and a lot of dice. 56. It burrows through and it hits the man, causing him to basically get flung out of the house and hits this tree. The area between him and the rest of the house that's covered in ice is now open. So you can run to the right if you wanted to. Uh, Zen also took roughly half 20... You mean Cerulean? Alright, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing that. Uh, Cerulean took 23 points of damage. Uh, ghost's turn. Oh, wait. Uh, she also... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Goes over here. Currently out of the house. Ghost then looks towards Zold and Q and begins to move through them. Zold and Q, I want you to both roll intelligence saving throws. Yeah, nope. Unfortunately for both of you, that is not enough. I will reroll mine then. That is more than fair. That is just enough. It's nice, nice knowing you guys. Immediately, you see the strange creature goes directly towards Zold and Q. Zold jumps out of the way and almost gets touched again in a bad place. Uh, maybe a no-no zone, maybe just the top of his head, trying to rip out his head. Uh, but luckily enough, he's able to move away from it and doesn't get possessed or whatever is going to happen. Q not realizing Aww. what's going to happen, uh, turns around tries to attack this thing and it just burrows into her flesh and it doesn't come out the other end. However, uh, Q, what's your alignment? Lawful neutral. Uh, it's not compatible. Uh, immediately it begins to jolt, convulse, and then rip itself out of your body. Dealing a very large portion of damage towards you, unfortunately. 
Uh, no, it... wait, no. I'm supposed to be chaotic neutral. Why does it have? Uh, must have. Yeah, it copied over something. I'm cha I'm supposed to be chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral? Uh, not compatible. Okay. I'm just. It. I don't know why it. Oh. Uh, it rips out of you, and it takes a good portion of your more or less soul with it. Your HP is now reduced to half, and it stays there until something can replenish that problem. All right, let me make a note of max HP is supposed to be. Morthos. You can tell that this strange abomination creature just basically ripped half of Quincy's soul out of her, just moving through her. And it's currently consuming the HP. I've got one spell slot. What am I gonna fucking do with it? I mean, I did say run. Yeah, unfortunately, she's not going to help you in this scenario. Because that'd be doing too much. I uh, yell at Zold and ask him if he needs help to get out of here. You can hear uh, each other, by the way. You're connected. Yeah. So, Zold, you need any help getting out of here? I cannot flee from this fight. This thing is not from here. It needs to go back. Do we have anything that might help? That laugh was creepy. Sorry. Wasn't me. That was my wife in the other room. Good timing, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was very creepy. Oh, Zold, what are we going to do? With Zold, Cerulean already left. Are you going to die here by yourself? I've made my vows. This is character-wise stuff. Alright. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to try it. Banishment? That is interesting. Are you banishing Q? <laughs> I mean, I thought about it, but... Okay. Uh, Charisma save again, right? Yeah. What's your save? DC 16. Okay, it's... One, one less. less. Roll 20. And it's a two! Yes! Fuck off. <laughs> okay, uh, just give me one second. I'm currently doing something. Now he is banished and we just gotta get out. We have to... Well, Marthos has to maintain concentration first. Yeah, meaning he can't be hit. And as long as he maintains concentration, it's, and if it's not up from this plane, it's gone for good. Or at least for a bit. Hey, sorry I super brutally murdered your father in front of you. I was planning on doing the same thing. Oh, okay. Um. You watch as Key is just sitting, standing there clutching her chest, like, very pale, because, like, I went from 88 hit points to 44. Okay, immediately, Morthos, you see this creature just rip out of existence, taking along Quincy's better part of herself. Oh, uh, fuck. Well, it consumed it. It didn't actually take part of you. Which isn't better. <laughs> it ate part of me. Uh, anything else, Morthos? Yeah. 
Um, guys, I'm out. All right. Do you begin so, to run to the right? Yeah. I'm also going to be using my bonus action here in a moment. Mm -hmm. And that is four, six. Plus a D4. So that's 11 points of healing as I run past Cerulean to her. Okay. Um, what I am going to say that was a room. Cerulean kind of broke it. Yeah. Oh, if I need to move down, I can. No, no, no. You can go through that way. It's just if you want to, like, scavenge anything from that area. I'll look while I'm running. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. If you're looking while you're running, it's your passive. What's your passive? Uh, oh no, that's as far as I can get, literally. Mm. What's your passive? But 14. Uh, I have the lowest, uh, I think. That's fair enough. When, what you can tell in this room is a stuffed teddy bear, um, a gemstone about the size of your fist, uh, ordained and decorative, kind of similar to a um, Russian egg thing, which I'm currently forgetting the name of. Nesting doll? Nest no, not a nesting doll. I know what you're talking about. The one that has the smaller ones inside it? No, that's a nest. No. Uh, no, it's Orthos, a... I believe you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm gonna... I'm gonna snag the egg and the teddy bears I run past them. You snag them both. Uh, you can roll again to perceive if you continue further down this room. Uh, next turn. The guards looking at the area begin to smash straight through as you did just kill their employer. They're not great, but they are loyal. Uh, unfortunately enough for you, they are able to break through the system. And break through they do. Without a roll, because there's four of them, but just in case. Uh, one, two, three. And then the one with three. Uh, Okay, just barely, I guess. Half of them roll well enough to break through, and the other half help. Uh, now the guards are able to get to you if they need to. The brother looking at the situation, seeing that you killed your both of your parent. <laughs> uh, seems to almost go in a somber like mo, not mo tone they don't seem to be angry at Q or no uh, seething rage more more as if why for what reason and they stop trying to get to you whatever they were trying to do they they just stop let's see trying to see what's going on the mage then cast magic missile again breaking through his wall and the wall beforehand they were trying to break. Allowing them to grab on to the young master, uh, but not enough that they are able to leave the area this turn. Right. Gonna move up and borrow Zen's square for a moment. All right. And shoot a fiery lightning bolt to the west, uh, trying to blast through the ice so they can get through it. So you're breaking into their system? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. Nice. You managed to break a good amount of damage that it goes through your system into theirs and then outside onto the other side of the wall. And you break a good portion of the wall into the next room. Uh, circle. And then I'm going to go that way to join Cerulean and Morthos. All right. And uh, that'll be it for me. Okay, cool. 
Um, what's near me that has a battery? Sorry, apparently my mouse decided to not work right now. Motorcycle sounds. Okay, I completely died. Uh, da, 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 da. That guy's unconscious. Uh, the old man uh, thanks you, takes the young master, and is able to get out. Currently not shown properly, but is currently outside. Uh, Zen comes over towards Quincy and tries to heal her. However, is unable to affect this properly. So as she casts Healing Word, she is unable to actually do anything to get you back on your feet. Zold. Um. Go right here. All right. Uh, and I'm going to uh, take a shot through the ice. I don't want to hit any of the guards. The door, it's already open. It's open. Oh, it's already open. Oh. You can shoot it anyways if you want. Um, no, I'm just going to uh, aim at them, at the first one in front, and just uh, tell them that uh, there is no need for farther conflict and that they should lay down their arms until the full story can be explained. As you're looking at them, trying to explain, hey, don't do your jobs, obviously we killed your boss, you can see in the distance that there are roughly five individuals heading in your direction. Okay, the battery I found does not work. <laughs> Anything you're doing with that information, Zold? Um, if I look through the scope, can I see what uh, affiliation these individuals are? Each of them have a crescent mark resembling that of a church organization. Um, however, you see similar to uh, Judeo-Christianity-like structured symbolism. Uh, basically, think the... Uh, the cross in between a pentagon shape. Okay. However, the cross is dyed red and the pentagon is a almost uh, pitch black color. Um. You've seen this before, actually. Uh, in fact, you recognize one of the individuals that is coming towards you. Uh, who is it? It's the woman you met before when uh, Zen slapped someone super hard. Uh, the, the blonde woman who I can't actually see right now because I'm still looking for a battery. It's the girl from Dickhead. Yeah. Party. I think we might be able to talk this one out, everyone. Yeah, but some people need to get out. Uh, do you still attack, or do you just hold? I was never going to attack these guards. These absolute fucking jobbers stand no chance. I'm way above their level. But to be precise, they are a level three. I, I didn't mean, like, literally, but yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, found a battery. Does it work? Thankfully. Zold fighting these guards would be the equivalent of a high schooler drop kicking a child. <laughs> Actually, adult drop kicking a child. Oh, uh, be, sorry, there are six people coming your way. It'd be like fucking McGregor going into a fucking novice, uh, like, taekwondo uh, child's gym. And losing. That'd be but enough. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll just hold off for now. All right. Um, let's see here. Moved unconscious. Uh, brought him outside. <clears throat> Tried to heal Q. Did not work. 
trying to play mediator against, hey, don't hurt us, we killed your boss, but it's okay, because we're cool. Uh, Q. I'm, um, uh, until then to get out now, I'll deal with this. Uh, uh she uh, nods, please. but can't and do anything until her turn. Basically gonna get in front of the soul, look over at him and say, go find Cerulean. And I'm gonna l then look over at the guards. And, uh... Tell them to stand down. Okay, and uh, roll persuasion. Even if you are a member of the household, yeah, yeah. 21. 21 is pretty good. Uh, it would make no sense logistically, but this is a game of D&D. &D. You manage to convince them long enough that they hold their ground but do not attack. They put their pikes to their sides, just waiting as they do hear footsteps behind them. Not close enough to be stabbed or... Uh, roped to death, but they I'll, do realize uh, that people are coming towards them. Put my mace and shield away and use my uh, action to get in front of Zold in between him and them and stand in a waiting for the people to arrive position. All right, and just beckon and like plead with Zold to go find Cerulean. On Cerulean. Zold isn't gonna, uh, doesn't seem like he's going to offer any... Um, he's not going to not listen to that now that the uh, apparition seems to have been taken care of. At least for now. Uh, Cerulean does come over because she was just right there. Da, 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 da. Does have a wand in her hand, but she sees you guys not attacking. And then just takes the rest of her action to go over here. Let's see here. Dead Marthos. Well, gonna continue my concentration on the spell. Because I really am hoping that that thing's not coming back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can let it go and find out. No. No, I have to hold it for the full minute or it does come back, no matter if it is from a different plane. I mean, that's true, but it could also trick you and lie to you and say that's not true. That not even very thing. nice at all. Um, I'm gonna kind of hang out over here next to Ray. I'm not getting too close. Make sure my disguise is in effect to look like the farm hand. Yeah, luckily enough, you weren't hurt, so no uh, change of mediation. Let's see. And... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I have one last thing ready, so if I need it, but we'll get to that, so. Okay. Just holding off on everything. The guards stand down, because you convinced them enough, but they do not let loose their weapons. Uh, still sad, still mortified, he does come out of the woodworks, uh, assisting the old man, as he does have a hard time walking, and brings him forwards. The mage teacher also comes soon after. Rayshana. I'm gonna move my well over there and use my action to move the rest of the way. And that'll be my turn. Alright, it seems that combat is over. So I'm going to get rid of turn order, but depending on what happens, uh, if Morthos 
Just, uh, I'll let you know, Morthos, after a minute has passed. Okay. Because I'm assuming you're still holding onto it, even without fighting. Yeah. It just makes it easier when we're not fighting. Fair. Let's see here. Beneath the mask, a classic. Okay. Basically tell the guards we have guests and look off in the distance uh, at the people that are coming. Um, alright. I'm also going to switch to the tone of the music. As you say that to the guards, they do look towards you. Has One sec. To... Okay. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, so, uh, was I being talked to? No, I was no. describing something and Rockets then said one sec. Oh, okay. I missed that. Yeah, I heard Ray say something, but I didn't know what, I, what he said. It's possible they had uh, something to do right now. Can we uh, take like five minutes real quick? That's perfectly fine. Extra. Take five. I will be here because I took five between that fight. <laughs> so I'm going to send you a random picture and see if this is like similar to what you were talking about. Just. I'm assuming on Discord? Yeah. Is that similar to the Crystal Egg? Yes. I can't think of what they're actually called. But I know what you're talking about. Mm hmm I just can't remember the name. They're all fancy. They got like the gold reliefs on it and whatnot. Yeah, it's, it's like something Emperor. A Faber J egg. Faber J, thank you. Faber J, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was driving me crazy. Sorry, I just watched John Wick. I feel like I should have known this. Can you spell that? W I C K. Uh, and then John, of course. A dogma. I hate how wrong that was on just. I, I hate it. It was pretty bad, yes. Roll d20. Uh, add whatever you feel is appropriate. Well, we'll just use what this character uses the most, which is string. So... Unfortunately for the DM, I am not proficient in uh, blades, but I am proficient in firearms, so. And technically I have a blade, so I could use that, which is a plus 11. <laughs> so I was, I was talking real life. Big oof. DM's, in, DM's big trouble. <laughs> I want to talk about the one scene in John Wick 3 real fast, where he's fucking throwing knives down at someone at like point blank range. Oh, that's that was so good. Brutal. I just I just wanted to mention that that scene exists and is like top tier cinema. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm back. Okay, we were taking five, by the way. Uh, Star has yet to return. Okay. Um, but basically, I'm... the group got here, and that's where we paused. And I'm going to be on my phone. So I'm not going to be at my computer for a moment. Okay, I'll let you know if you uh, get killed. As one is not ought to do. <laughs> I mean, I'll let him roll Davy. Davy. Wow, where's uh, that saves? 
Uh, David throws are rolled before you are born. Three fails, and your parents automatically name you David. I'm back, sorry. Okay. It seems everyone's here, and Alkios is now on his phone, but still able to hear. Uh, but I basically tell the guards, we... We have gas. We have gas, we have and gas. then one of them turns into a lamp. Uh, no, that doesn't happen. Uh, wrong game. That's right, my right, Sunday right. game. Are you threatening me with a Beauty and the Beast game? Because I'd play the <laughs> fuck out of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe the next campaign. Uh, entering into the next area, you do see that uh, Q then mentions to the guards, we will soon have guests to arrive. Not too great off in circumstances. They don't release their weapons. They do put them to the side as if they're guarding the house, but also keeping a wary eye on your group that assaulted the house and turned it into an ice castle. Soon after, well, however... Technically, we didn't do that. <laughs> guys, it's not a Beauty and the Beast campaign. It's a fucking Frozen campaign. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's even worse. That means there's no Gaston. I mean, he does look pretty Gaston-like. Uh, well, that's the way I feel sometimes. Anyways, uh, the three individuals and then the makeshift bodyguards come towards your group, uh, realizes what's happening, and then the one in the middle sighs heavily because she notices... Uh, no, no, you're all just dis disguised. disguised, except for Q, because she relinquished it when she entered the house. No, I relinquished it at the portal. Okay. Uh, no, she has no idea who you are before this. I mean, she might have known of you and you might know of her, but that's the best she knows of you. So, entering inside, she does sigh heavily because she does know who Lady Quincy Bishop is. The rest of you are complete n nobodies to her, currently. She then states, Alright, this is gonna be a problematic situation. Uh, guards, by the order of the church, you are now to disband. Uh, the one in the middle then states the one clearly th with the plus three in his modifier. Looks towards her and then states, uh, But my lady, no, oh, no, it's fine. It's ordained by the minister. Don't worry about it. She then hands each of them a piece of paper. Please go collect your pay in consummated, consummated amount. Distribute it to you once this is all cleared. Unfortunately, this is now the ordained... Uh, this is under the ordained authority of the said church. I do apologize for the situation. I am terribly sorry if you cared for your boss or loved one or I don't know what he is to you. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't Just visit boss. this house that often. Uh, she looks towards you uh, and goes, boss is perfectly fine, Miss Bishop. Again, I don't actually visit you. It's not as if a tier three family has any reason to. So, uh, chop chop and then she basically orders them to leave which unfortunately if they wanted to stay they can't not stay here unless they disobey orders um while she's you know giving them their new orders i'm gonna like tap sold and quietly whisper you know this is the thing i was worried about uh i need to act like you know, your worker or something. Currently, you don't look like a Tiffany, by the way. <laughs> well, no, it's just because I look like the farmhand. I'm going to act like I work for him or something. That's um, fair enough. This this woman has got a good head on her shoulders. If we can speak to her privately, I'm sure this situation can be uh, explained away. Yeah, but also it's dealing with the church and Let's just say me and the church don't get along. So, uh, pose, pose as a worker. Say that you're here cleaning, uh, tending to the garden. Simply meet us back at the capital, uh, town square. All right. 
Now then, Miss Bishop, how are you today? It seems that you have been ordained by a very powerful fey entity that established connections with us and brought us here. I've been better. I see that. It seems to me that you decided to, after hearing and responding to a call of distress, maybe about your brother being here and your family being cast aside and entering into their summer home in order to make sure that they're safe, you decided to take this on and crush the current head of the house and the next current heir. I don't blame you for this. However, being that aside, I do need to get full testimony from you and anyone else that was here. After that, we will ordain who is next of heir and where punishment should lie. I'm gonna, uh, as she's talking to me, look over at my brother and do an insight check on him to ascertain his, what he's feeling, trying to gauge his reaction to everything that's happened. All right. From what you can wow, tell, he. Four. <laughs> from what you can tell, he seems distraught. He seems mortified, mm -hmm. and he seems betrayed. I I, I I look over at him. And I say, "You'll understand, brother." No, I don't think I will. But he says nothing more after. You do hear a laugh in the in the distance. <laughs> Good damn it. I swear. I'm gonna beat her. <laughs> okay, you know what? That is now Mab's laugh. <laughs> okay, um, but he basically says, "No, I don't think I will." Basically indicating that you basically betrayed him and the family. But that second part, you can tell he doesn't really care for. Well, uh, how should I say this? He doesn't care about the monetary wealth. He doesn't care about the house. Just your actions. However, uh, the person that arrived here then states, All right, then. Is this everyone here? I can get testimony from the guards a little bit later. That's why I sent them out to get their pay and to collect statements so as to not be influenced by the current party members. There was a other fellow too the one with the mutton chops uh, i think he went somewhere off in that direction uh oh, very good miss that's her over there hmm uh <clears throat> david do you mind she looks and points towards uh the man with the no hair but brown mustache mm, very good Oh, uh, excuse me, pardon me. Goes through the group, uh, bows and tips his cap to you, uh, Rayshana, but he doesn't say Rayshana. Uh, pardon me, miss. Now then, other than that, can we begin? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, basically how this works, do you at all in one point lie to him? Do you tell her the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, or do you skim it to make it look like you were the rightful party members that destroyed a evil organization or whatever you, your backstory would be? I basically tell her what happened in the past. The um, experiment, the father put me and my brother there. He proceeded, the brother is been was killed, but then uh, come back to find today that he was brought back and that my father had made a deal with the group <clears throat> to I'm assuming give influence in the nobility into the kingdom and was tethered to something that uh, currently has been taken care of a creature I'll uh All right. Tell her I had problems with him about the issues with me and the brother, but that wasn't what caused this incident. It was finding out that he had t 
ties to that to an unknown organization that he offered something to bring the brother back then was tethered to something unnatural all right uh she then states all right then very good now the rest of you uh does anyone change alter or uh repeat i'll just tell her what i saw happen at the house exactly as i saw it happen Mm -hmm. zold what about you um yeah uh i'll say it as i saw it um i'll inform of the uh, aberration that snuck through and claim that that is my domain and that is more or less why i'm here uh as you're describing this morthos you feel that a minute has passed can i kind of look behind me and see if the apparition comes back just a dead body i'm afraid speaking of morthos do you repeat alter or completely make up a lie um gotta do a little lie but I'm going to go with the same thing of what was seen here mm-hmm. with the apparition. And uh, I'm just a farmhand. I know some magic. It seemed to be helpful in this situation. I was coming here to look for, see if they would employ me. Um, I met this group. I traveled with them, actually. Uh, they allowed me to. I, I didn't know what was going on. Mm. But I figured I should help them. Because they have been kind to me. So far, no one has altered anything. So, Morthos, go ahead and roll Deception with advantage. <clears throat> Alright then, very good. Uh, you miss and you miss. Pointing towards Cerulean and Zen. They basically gave the same altered uh, story. Well, not altered, but uh, they correlate with everyone else's uh, story, but nothing really changed except for the fact that uh, this hole that was blown out from the east section of the house was due to Mutton Chops, who is currently unconscious right now. Which is not a lie, technically, because his body did break it. Uh, but it's also not the truth. So I'm just going to roll that privately and see what happens after. She then takes testimony to state from the rest of the individuals that were in the house. Let's see here. Do, do, do. do any of you eavesdrop? Because they're just gonna. I'm I'm listening in because for the pass of twenty four, I should be able to hear from over here. I mean, they're not being mm-hmm. quiet. I'm just asking. Do any of you? Yes. Care to? I listen in. Okay. Nah. Uh, they just basically same the same, same more or less story. However, that you did altercate, uh, not altercate. You did cause the altercation as you did swing first. Swing first was the cage system, which would in turn be a more of self defense system. Soon after, after the head of the house now deceased, trying to fight back until you basically killed him. The group basically killed him. He doesn't point out someone directly. They were trying to save uh, the next, former next heir, maybe still current. And didn't actually get the best read on situations. When she goes and speaks with your brother, uh, the brother simply states, "Um, I'm sorry, but I am not exactly sure what exactly happened. My Miss Quincy attacked my father and killed him with the assistance of the man over there pointing towards Zold, but not Zold. Beyond that, I was basically emotionally distraught and can't really remember most things right now. Is there another time I can do this? I'm afraid there's not, but it more or less correlates with everyone else's story. Thank you, sir. It's fine. (sighs) Then it comes back over here. All right, it seems to me that everything seems to be in order. And unfortunately for you, Miss Bishop, you now are the next heir 
to the estate. We will have the former heir to be raised and living off onto the summer home. They will have some compensation for the said trouble, but ultimately they will not be allowed back here without permissions from the next heir, which would be you, Miss Bishop. That being said, uh, she then claps her hands and then the guards surround uh, your brother, his teachers, and this woman drags this guy over here. They didn't even bother to uh, question him. We will now take them into custody and, well, punishment is observant and unfortunately I can't exactly bend the rules for them here. I'll uh, look over my brother one last time, shake. He does need to be checked over because the ways that he was brought back, there's probably something going on. That is why we're here. It is why we have the sole purpose to bypass most, if not all, transient laws. It's also why a lot of people in our organization are dicks. Mm. And they get carted off. Uh, now then. Uh, David, do you mind going along? I suppose not. Is everything going to be alright? Yeah, perfectly fine. I just need to check some things out with these people, making sure everything's in order. Alright, I'll make sure that everything else is fine with the team. You do that. And he goes off with the rest of the group. She sighs once again, and then states, Ah. Oh. Uh, Zod, Cerulean, Zen, I don't know you, points towards Bishop. Uh, Q. Ray and Morthos, it's been a while. How have you been? Oh. <clears throat> you can, you can, uh, see past the mask. Yeah, that's kind of what true sight does i think i mentioned this before regardless clever trick good to know i mean you see my sister she's better at this than i am it takes me a while to focus in but is she, uh, you know remind me out of character her sister is the girl in the other town ain't she yeah she is uh, remind me of her name i believe it was just cat kathy okay kathy ah i met kathy uh a little while ago. She seems nice. Seems perfectly fine. Uh, although she mainly gets into trouble, which is why we have a cat out there. So she doesn't get people involved in her escapades. I count her amongst one of my friends. Oh, no, she's a perfectly nice person. She's a handful, though. Hmm. So, what brings you into town, other than usurping your father? Basically, the organization that he made the deal with is someone where some uh, is basically we're hunting. They're trying to get their fingers. They're bringing creatures, creating creatures, and mm, that's an issue. And it might have something to do with the scientists in town that came in recently. Uh, it probably does. Uh, then I would suggest getting. <clears throat> Uh, well, you could probably get uh, ordained in my ch church organization and then uh, get their authority to investigate them, or you can go to your own. Um, uh, I'd rather do yours because I don't like my church. Sorry. <laughs> I am. I mean, I've if had you're... issues with this church. That before seems more enough fair i was mainly speaking of your night order though i have it they've got some there's some people in the order that i'm looking into also mm, fair enough i mean if you're fine with the council of five you're more than welcome to visit uh i'm actually heading there now if you want to go yeah i i wouldn't mind but uh, i kind of grip my chest a little bit that little uh, creature that came through kind of did a number on me. I need uh, to see about getting this. Uh, do you mind describing situated. 
Uh, I'll describe it as best as I can. Describe it as I best as you can. She then states, that, if I can remember correctly, was a high-leveled wraith. It basically consumes your spirit, and uh, unless you get it, a greater restoration spell cast upon you, uh, uh, you'll be that. stuck that way until you overcome it, and that could involve many a way. I could probably do that in a day. All right, and then I'll look over at Ray. Do you have that uh, access to that ability at the moment, or no? Yes, I have that spell prepared for cases just such as this. Do you mind? Uh, Layla does state, well, uh, whatever you want or plan to do, she then gives you the address. Excuse me, I just burped. Uh, address to her. I just burped again, sorry. Uh, to her church organization. I'll be there shortly. Um, Layla, can you just keep quiet about me? Don't tell anyone that you've seen a tiefling like myself. I mean, I don't plan to, but if you don't want people to see a tiefling, you might want to get Zen to change into something else. Uh, I do plan on coming and visiting alone. Nah, eh, bring friends. More enough. More room. Plenty of room. Only if I you want to, wanna... though. She does wave. I don't want to tie them down. And she just shouts out while she's walking away. A little late for that. Mm-hmm. And then just... Oh! Leaves. No. Oh, ask you can her. ask her still, but... I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with her real quick. Okay. Uh, out of earshot of the others... What did Map say exactly? Uh, specifically, they didn't speak with me. They spoke with my higher up. But apparently, there was some chosen of the Winter Court, the potential next avatar, to come and assist them as one uh -oh. of the council would deem necessary. I have a feeling she is gonna do something like that. I'm pretty sure my boss has more information. But that's basically the gist of what we got. And to try to uh, skew things in the chosen one, she puts up air quotes, is favor. I, yeah, I made a deal with her. She upheld. And I guess I'm going to have to uphold mine. I mean, we'll see. Well, I'll tell your higher ups. I'll be there shortly. And she nods and then walks away. <clears throat> and then I'll walk back to the group sit down on the ground in a just like cross-legged and look at everybody in uh kind of somberish look it's like i'm sorry i pulled you guys into this i mean you did tell us to leave um some of them were probably going to listen it's just it was never an option for me I, uh, I don't want anything to happen to you, people. It's funny. My family's here. This is my family's place, but I feel more at, at home with you guys. I, uh, I don't know, being the next heir, what it entail is going to entail now. Because I had originally never planned to take over... You can ignore uh, them, by the way. Okay. But things have progressed to this point. I, uh, I know some of you don't like the church. I personally don't have, have fond feelings for them, but... I have had a recent change and look, look at Cerulean and not like nod to her and I do appreciate what you have done. Uh, kind of stare at Zen for a little bit and then go back to the group. My intentions were never to involve you 
to be under the ire of something you didn't want. But hearing what he said and the choices he made kind of lost a little bit of control and I am sorry. It's in the past. Well, I guess the secret's out. What secret? I kind of sold myself. I had my suspicions. So when is this person going to come to collect? You mean Mab? She's probably watching right now, but I don't know. She never she told me when. She just said that. I had I, all I had to do was ask for my for her part and then that was it she never told me when or what she was going to do you do but feel from... a tingling sensation around your body currently oh, Lord. not as if she's trying to take over but something something you felt before was is it the same feeling as when I was talking with her um is it the same sensation? Kind of, yeah. That, I know, that she's here? Like, that I get the feeling that she can hear me. I mean, she can always hear me, but... Uh, maybe not the second part, but the first part. Okay. But... I had initially planned to use it to save Zen. But... I let my emotions get the better of me, and I used it a little too quickly. I do, uh... The reason behind the deal... Is right before I made it... Remember that plant? Let me see something. And I didn't like what I saw. I saw Sin standing in the midst of her family here and with their intent to kill her and I couldn't let that happen well you might have perhaps told the rest of us so we could try and come up with something together well until now I didn't know if I could trust you guys at this point you don't feel that sensation anymore alright I didn't feel like I could trust you to that extent as I've not known you guys that long but after today, I don't think I'll ever be able to question or what's the word? Doubt your sincerity, sin sincerity, or willingness to help me. And again, I do apologize about that. A little late for apologies, but I suppose it can't be helped. Well, while we're on the aspect of sharing, um, since we're having this issue now, I might as well tell you all the truth. Uh, as you all know, I try to avoid the church is mainly the heavier religious sex as much as possible and that deals with my past um, 
you all obviously know I'm not your average run of the mill tiefling. Right. I'm actually a half breed. I'm half tiefling, half bright mate. And the church that my parents worshipped at saw that as one of the greatest sins and see they see me as an abomination. My parents were killed and I was supposed to be as well, but I was able to get away. I don't know what happened. I went into seclusion for seven years. Whereupon I made my pact with my patron. So with that said, yeah, they could still be hunting me to this day. Because they even know I'm not dead, more than likely. Yeah. So I need I'm trying to avoid the church as much as possible. Especially in a larger place like this. Yeah. Well, I do, I do want to go and possibly get that order, this or the order she belonged to. Badge, hopefully, to maybe it might help us with our situation. Um, well, while you do that, the I can just kind of scout around. The that's city. what I was. That's what I was about to suggest. Since hmm. you don't want to. And I, I completely understand that. I don't have anything against that. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, to be specific, uh, just to make things clear, Morthos is a uh, subject order of church that uh, is more or less maybe still hunting him. Is the order of the crimson order of crimson? Um, is, the is that what she's a part of? Layla is the council of five. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I'm good. Well, um... To be specific, Order of the Crimson Wave. Well, uh... I still have my reservations about my brother. So we might have to cross that bridge when it gets there, too. Uh, I look at, a, I look at Zold. While I do appreciate... What you did... I uh, don't want you to have to make that choice again. There's never any choice. Uh, he kind of just smiles. I appreciate the uh, the thought. I just don't want my. I just don't want blood on your hands that you might regret later because I'm gonna be honest I don't think my brother should be alive even if he doesn't know or isn't aware I do have a feeling that the Insurgency has done something to him when bringing him back. And I just don't think he understands. And I do see possible retribution in the future from him. I've got to deal with the. I, uh, I want to go and deal with uh, the, the Ch Council of Five and then figure out. possibly be ridiculed by my my mother I would like to see my little brothers if possible while we're in the area but that can come after we've dealt with what we're doing but um I, d I would like to go and talk with this council and see what Mav did and said uh, to be specific, your summer home is in Hythe, which is the port city I mentioned beforehand. Uh, oh, okay. A good distance away from here. 
I didn't. I didn't. I thought you just meant like it was a little bit of ways out of the city. Sorry. For noblemen, it's a bit of a ways out of the city. Gotcha. But uh, I'll correct that. I'll basically say it when we can. I'd like to visit Hythe, but if my brother's being sent there, might need to. I don't know. Might see about figuring out a way to bring my mother and brothers back here instead of being there with him. But uh, I do plan on going to the council to speak with them. In the distance, okay. you do see two people coming towards you. I'll stand up and get up off the ground. Okay. And look at, look in their direction. They're still a distance away. I. Uh, Hope that none of the, my actions can make will make you guys trust me less. I'm a little hurt that you didn't trust us to start with, so I might hold that against you more or less, but for another time. Ray nods in agreement with Sol. Well, can you? Bl I mean, honestly, can you blame me? I, until I, I mean, it's only been like what. Two and a half weeks since I met you guys. Uh, based on timelines in game, month, month and a half. Month and a half since I met you guys. You came to my wedding. <sighs> I thought you. I honestly just thought you were being nice, as we were part of the same team. Uh, as you say that, Cerulean does state. You do realize he didn't invite half the people we work with, right? Yeah, but... Forgiveness for time. Q Thanks. will turn to the group and bow. And just... I, I am sorry. Forgiveness with time. We have other matters to attend here. At this point, you can tell that the woman that you invited beforehand is coming with another individual. <laughs> oh, <good laughs> we didn't get here earlier. Uh, unfortunately will... for her, unfortunately for her, she had to collect her things from the orphanage she was staying at because she had to help them and they were the only ones that uh, bothered with her more or less in this town uh in the distance you do hear her state uh, well you do hear her friend state are you sure you were invited here i mean we can always go back no it's fine i just wanted to uh i mean she seemed nice and uh, if i'm right um uh, she might uh be able to help uh she then looks at the house i think she might need to help herself first <laughs> I kind of hear kind of chuckle. They're still a distance away, but they're still walking towards you. Ah, it looks like you made it. Okay. Uh, they managed to get towards you enough that they can respond. Uh, yeah. Um, is everything okay? Uh, yeah, just a bit of a family squabble. Nothing more. <laughs> half of the area is on fire. Uh, the other half is grown up broken i believe uh it's actually on the opposite of fire right it's like part of it's frozen still oh yeah uh, okay uh it's no longer on fire but it is melting uh yeah so uh nice <laughs> um suggestion here since the situation happened here uh, why don't we have her go back to Roanoke to the entertainers there? That would give her the really actual establishment she needs. Mm hmm But I will say this, uh, she is always welcome here to keep the badge. You will always be welcome in this household. Oh, um, I, I mean... If you guys know of a job, I'm more than willing to go and help, but it's nice to know that I can also stay here. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't say stay here right now until we get things fixed, but 
Uh, she nods because, again, uh, Cerulean and Ray blew up half your house. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't blow it up. I just shot a laser through part of it. <laughs> you... Yeah. Yeah, uh... It was Cerulean uh, that shot a beam through it. What... Currently, there's a uh, group that is, uh... Working out of a troop, uh, working out of uh, Roanoke. It's where, basically where I, I'm currently been staying. Uh, but uh, they're looking; they they could be looking for some in, uh, potential employees. So if you want, you can go and check there. But as I said earlier, you'll always have a place to stay here uh, when I fix up the place and get it scored away. Uh... All right, um, that sounds good. Um, but I am going to stay here for about two more... Not here, here. Uh, she looks at the house, obviously. <laughs> um, but I was just coming by, uh, well, to introduce you to my friend. Uh, she points towards her friend. And to tell you that I will be here for about two more weeks before I make any um, actual decisions. Oh, be careful. This town stay away. Stay away from the water. Uh, oh, um, I did overhear something about strange creatures coming out. Yeah, that didn't look too good. Stay yeah, it's away, true. Stay away from the scientist. Uh, that's a first. Uh, but all right. Um, her friend, because you have yet to ask her her name, that's perfectly fine. Uh, roundabout states, uh, Ferna, are you sure these people can help? Oh, yeah, I'm sure, Jewel. Uh, oh wait, her name's Anna. <laughs> Wrong character. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, well, I'll be here for about two more weeks until the Battle of the Bands, uh, happens. Um, but I wanted to introduce you to Anna. Uh, her friend. Uh, you can tell that she is a high elf, royally birthed and blood. Uh, Quincy, you can tell she comes from a very prestigious family. Higher than yours, but... You've never met this person. You never had to forcibly smooge, uh, kiss, uh, I was about ass. to say kiss ass, kiss ass, but <laughs> not the appropriate term I'm looking for, but kiss ass works just fine. Um, well, basically I wouldn't do it. That's yeah, one of the reasons that, I had problems with my father. That too. Um, but she does carry the house emblem of the scar. Ah, I've heard of the name, right? Yes. Ah, Lady Scar. Uh, Finally meet. Uh, and it's fine. Um, okay. That's, Q's fine with me, too. So I don't like on honorifics. That's perfectly fine. Uh, listen, I run the orphanage a uh, few distance away from here. Like, completely on the opposite side of this street. Uh, for some time now, some of my children have stated that people have gone missing. Uh, from the street, sometimes some of the beggars disappear after a while. Um, some single parents or some people that don't have any blood ties to the house, any of the houses or anyone that usually lives alone <coughs> goes missing for a while and doesn't come back. I just wanted to let you guys know if you could help out in some way to make sure that none of my kids also go missing. We're probably uh, going to be looking into that anyways. Uh, would I be able to stop by the orphanage to speak with a few of the children just to see get the full story from them uh sure i do crazy. have uh this notebook she just handed to you uh it's written in my language though so i don't know uh how you would interpret the children but this is how i interpreted them but you're more than welcome to come by <coughs> uh just please let me know beforehand so i can have them uh cleaned up um would here shortly be too soon? Um, I mean, I was gonna... I do have... Well, John is over there, but he mainly just makes sure that none of the kids' bones break. Uh, if you want to speak with him, I suppose you can. Uh, him and the kids, of course. Uh, but right now I'm gonna get, uh, Verona some new clothes and making sure that she's well taken care of. Oh, uh, no, it's fine. You don't have to do that. Uh, listen, you are going to try to perform in two weeks, aren't you? Uh, yeah. 
well, then you need to make sure that you're presentable in this town. And unfortunately, that means that you will have to be uh, decked out in all mm -hmm. a lot of stupid things. Um, if you want He's to... He's gonna look at Zen. You look at Zen. Go ahead, Ray. I don't suppose you're gonna help her, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you... Even with your pat. Uh, what's your pants perception? Me? Yeah. 20? You can clearly tell that she does have a notebook currently written now and currently writing notes. Uh, when you <laughs> look towards her, she immediately tried to hide it, but with your past perception, you can still see it in her hands. She was already <laughs> going to try. <laughs> well, I don't think we have anything else planned immediately, so I don't think it'd be a problem. Uh, Cerulean... I was considering going with Morthos. Uh, yeah, I do need to stop by the council. Uh, Cerulean does state, we do have a few things we can do, but there's no current pressing matters as no assassins have yet to come towards us, so I doubt anyone other than Lilia knows that we're here. Layla, sorry. Oh, that's good. Um... So... Hugh, you're headed to the, the council. The council. Me and Ray are going to the orphanage. I will actually hand Ray the notebook that I was given. All right. I will take a look at it to see if I recognize what language it's written in. Uh, it's written in simple common, but the calligraphy is outstanding. So it's written in fancy. <clears throat> It's written in uh, fancy, but it's still common. <laughs> uh, Zold, do you have a moment? Um, a moment. Uh, it's private. By all means. I'll, uh, lead him off to the side. And, uh, let me quote, this is where Q grew up, correct? Yes. Okay, Unless you wanted to, uh, grow up in your summer home this is where you would grow up i did i was just wanting to make sure because because i know nobles have multiple places and i don't know whether or not i didn't elaborate enough and i didn't know how what you had had planned but well you didn't elaborate enough so i just basically made this your home base okay i'll take him over to a little spot i used to hide from my father in off in some of the trees all right, uh, you go over to an area where you used to hide with uh, a few other children here and there. You still have uh, Jimmy and John's. Is, uh, they engraved their names inside of a stone somehow. One of them was able to cast Mold Earth at a very young age, soon after he was taken. And, uh, well, he's in the military now. Uh, currently third ranked and fighting with his own platoon. Right. No, uh, uh, one of them does, the other one is currently at war. One of them what? No, it's just Ray picked on my joke, and I really hope no one did. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy John. <laughs> I'll make sure uh, <laughs> we're out of earshot. Okay. I, uh, I know this is probably out of my scope of willingness because I have burned a little bit of the bridges with you guys with not telling you. As I was saying on the, that vision, <clears throat> When Zen goes to meet her family, I saw her surrounded by... How... Do I remember exactly how many I saw? No, it was similar to a nightmare. You just saw uh, 
what, what are they called? The Eladrin flanking her on one side and the pure drow flanking her on the other. I don't want anything to happen to her. I can assure you, no harm shall befall her. But also... If and when we do get there, stuff, shit hits the fan. Would you be able to be willing to get her out of there? That's not quite my specialty. I can, I can ensure that Cerulean has the capability, but something like that is outside my own reach. That's fine. I just, I don't know. It, it, it's strange. Never really. There's only, only been one person that I've had a connection to. Mm -mm to want to protect over anything and I felt the first time <clears throat> I I just don't want to fa fail this time mistakes are part of being human I really care about her I don't know how she feels about me but I always want her to be safe. And uh, I fear that if you're asking me for romantic advice, it's a bit outside my realms as well. Not really, because I mean, I do love her, but I do I will, I would respect anything that she decides, but I always want to be there to help protect her. I can understand. I, like I said, I've never really felt this way before. <clears throat> Coming from a noble family, I've always been in situations like this where I've had many of people trying to I can't even think of the right word. It's uh, out of character. I can't think of the right word. It's uh, kiss ass. No, well, yeah, but <laughs> pursue Let's me. Court. Court. Yeah, that word. I've had many of people court me in the past, but. It's just, I've never really, it's, it's, it's new to me. So that's, that's what I mean. So, and oh, apologies, but I am spoken for. And he <laughs> kind of laughs. <laughs> You're funny. I was just about to get to that. And seeing you marry Cerulean and being with the one you love. I understand. All right. But I do. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get back with the others. Let's my right. wife think I'm cheating on her. Yeah, no. You're not my type. Uh, while this is going on, Zen does stay to Cerulean. Do you think he's cheating on you? No, I don't think she's his type. Uh, Anna then goes over <laughs> towards this group, however. All right, um, if you are going to go to the orphanage, I am unfortunately not going to be able to assist you. But uh, do you take my card. This will allow you 
to enter in, sign it without any keystones. Uh, she then hands you what appears to be a platinum gold card with filigree on it, similar, similar to a um, magic lock, but in the opposite direction. Uh, that being said, she then gives uh, Morthos the address, puts it on a little piece of paper, writes it very e elegantly, and then hands it over. Thank you. At this point, uh, did you ask her anything, Ray or Morthos? <clears throat> you don't have to. Um, I can't think of anything. Nope, nothing comes to mind. All right. Uh, at this point, Zold and Q would probably get there at that point. Somebody's going to drag you over. All right. <clears throat> All right, then. Uh, you did mention one of your team was going to assist me in picking out outfits. Uh, Zen raises her hand. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be me. Uh, excellent. Uh, and tell me, have you ever gone shopping before? Uh, uh, once or twice. Uh, good. <laughs> Q laughs. Uh, you might be able to assist us then. Unfortunately, uh, Farana has really not shopped till she dropped, as some of my people would say anybody going with Zen <clears throat> Cerulean <laughs> uh, she looks towards you uh, yes okay are you uh, are you going with Zen or uh, to the church no, Zen is going shopping. Uh, she looks towards you. You've been with her shopping, right? I meant to protect her. Uh, look, you know how I plan poorly in missions, but still am technically dangerous? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zen overplans to the point where it is dangerous to go against her. I'm going to insider to, because. Go for it. 25? No, she's not lying whatsoever. Okay. 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 It, Th it... That doesn't mean she won't fall into any danger, but <clears throat> she is smart enough to realize when she needs help. She will call when she needs it. And I really don't want to shop. I, I, I'm a, I agree with you there, but I understand. <clears throat> wow. Needless to say, we're splitting up. Try to keep your uh, bracelets Communicator on. Yeah, turned on, so we can contact each other if something does happen. I'll turn mine on. Based on if, since there's a person here from our organization, there's likely a system established in this city, so we should be able to speak with each other as long as we're not restrained in some way, fashion, or form. It's what Cerulean states. Yeah. Um, so, Ray, you're going with me to the orphanage? Yep. So, I guess we should get going. Good luck with the church situation, Q. Uh, Cerulean then states, uh, do you two, looking at Q and Zold, mind if I go Play with the kids. I I don't have a problem. What's that doing? <clears throat> um, may I accompany you? Uh, she looks towards you. You may do as you wish. I just don't want to get involved with the church again. Oh, why don't some... Um... Why don't you, you and me pair off them? Fair enough. Sure, there are some nice bars for them to check out. There are. Okay, um, so groups, uh, you forgot your dragon, Ray. And I think you actually forgot you had a dragon. Nope, I just can't move that one. Why? 
I uh, try this one. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna shrink it down to the proper size. And I'm gonna bind this one to the character sheet. So now it can disappear <clears throat> and you can just drag it wherever you want and it'll be the appropriate size. Great. I don't know what was wrong with that one. Okay. Um, so, I know where going you're by. going to the church. Ray and Martha are going to look at kids, maybe pick one out. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> do a little window shopping. Serling and Zold, what are you two doing? Slash me. Um, Actually, I think it, we can make good use of our time and go uh, search for uh, Serling's sister. Uh, good for you. I honestly thought you forgot about that part. No. It's my fucking wife. No, I didn't forget. <laughs> His wife, eh? I mentioned it twice, which is... Okay. Uh, hardball, <clears throat> what I'm basically stating is I do not have good players with good remembering. Haha. <laughs> 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 Joke's on you. I don't remember shit. I just have notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay, I remember uh, the important things. I'm going to take the... Two people, uh, non-NPCs, to the orphanage. Ignore the people in the corner. It's also technically a bar. The children run the bar? That's fucking metal as hell. You enter into the area without too much issue, and luckily enough, you do get there in time. Uh... Zold is technically correct. They do run the bar. Technically. And an armory, apparently. Uh, no, they just uh, don't allow any of the customers to wield weapons while inside for obvious reasons. There are children around. <laughs> Alcohol is fine. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh. So just put all the weapons on a table where a child could go up and one. Exactly. <laughs> it's not the best system, and this is the poorest area in the city. Alright, so use the card to get in, I guess? Use the card to get into the back entrance, and easy enough, you enter inside. Uh, you do hear the man named John, as you do have heard before. He looks towards you, uh, dwarven in stature, because he is a dwarf, unfortunately for one of you. Uh, looks towards you with a halo of fire on top of his head. Oh, uh, welcome to the orphanage. Is there anything I can do with you? Drink, uh, food perhaps. Uh, please place all bladed weapons on the table, of course. In my current disguise, I just look like a farmhand carrying a slime creature. Uh, I'll put my dagger on the table. All right. All I have is this guy. His name's Peep, and he actually cannot hurt anything. Uh, well, he can eat, he can hurt food. He I mean, if it's some... someone, if you put him on top of them, <clears throat> or shot put him to someone to death. Um, I was <laughs> going to do that, but I didn't have to. That's true. Um, he then states, very good. Uh, is there something I can assist you with? I see you have uh, Anna's card. Yeah, um, she had mentioned we're looking into certain things, but she had mentioned the children told her how some of the beggars have vanished recently. Uh, yes, unfortunately that has occurred. Um, I can tell you what I have heard from them, but if you want to speak with them, Anna did trust you, so I suppose you can communicate with them. Some of them are roughly around the ages of five, and others are roughly in their teens, uh, a few months from being adults. Is okay. all this food actually on the table? All this food is actually on the table. As you say that, Peep does come out of his shell, um, slash Morthos's pocket, and then begins to consume. I'll nope. let my... Peep. I'll let my fairy dragon go and look for some food. 
I will... I'm probably going to have to spend a lot of money here. Because of Pete. Uh, currently he is consuming a uh, pumpkin pie. And I'll browse the food to see if there's anything I want. Uh, there's a lot of desserts. There's a lot of custards, pies. There are plenty of meat dishes. Nothing looks too fanciful, but everything looks splendid. Um, they aren't starving for food, thankfully enough. Maybe because a very high noble is probably paying for most of this. But they are not... Um, from what you can tell, uh, based on the children's look and attire, many of them know how to work. Many of them know how to bake. They are here for several purposes, but they are also here for... All oh, right, sorry. <laughs> uh, but they are also here for uh, training. More than likely, they are being trained to do various things, such as baking, cooking, uh, serving skills, making sure that they are capable bouncers for some of the older kids. They are not, um, how should I say, weak in the sense of standard children in a city full of orphans. Kinda walk down his side and lean over and hand him money. Uh, yeah, if this isn't enough, I, I'll give you more. I will hand him a hundred gold. Uh, you hand him a hundred gold and goes, Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, but you have Anna's card and she does replenish anything she eats. Um, <laughs> that slime is quite I don't know how to really say it. At this he point, he's on the tweets. table. I'm going to have to go get him. One second. I'm <laughs> going to try and pick Peep up. Um, oh, no, I should be able to. You're able to pick him up just fine. He just now has five pies in him. Um, yeah, I'm worried about that. That's so why I'm trying to keep him from eating. Um, but he looks towards you two and then states, So, you're welcome to speak with me or any of the children. Just uh, do not bring up anything about adoption as I do not believe you are here to do so. We make sure no, they have I... a proper future in case no one is here to adopt them. But we're also making sure that people don't hurt them. Unfortunately, some of them are not human. And some of them are half braid which is sometimes worse in this city. Yes, this city does seem to have a problem in that regard. And I am assuming you have no issue with half breeds. Uh, no. He looks towards you. Um, I'm sorry if I offended you. I will drop the disguise at this point. I and reveal myself. You do so, and he is startled. Not uh, oh, a tiefling. Well, uh, more like oh, a tiefling. That's weird. Uh, mainly because you just appeared out of nowhere, basically. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much like that. Uh, sorry. I was watch seeing what has been put in Discord. Uh, Dwarf then states to you. Uh, all right, then. Uh, you're fine here, but I would not recommend going into any of the rich districts. That's why I have the disguise currently. It's just I know they can be a little rude here, so. Uh, he looks towards you and slightly whispers, "They can be asses. It's all right to say it. Just don't say it out loud in front of the kids." Oh, I'm sure uh, they've heard worse. <laughs> they have, but he's more than likely. Yeah. Uh. The man does state. So, uh, is there anything I can get you, or are you here to uh, ask questions? Uh, I'm going to speak with the children. If that's okay. Um, Perfectly fine. Can I look at Ray? Uh, if you want to speak with him, maybe see what he knows. Well, you can do that. Your dragon peruse the food. All right. 
As you go around the area, you do see that two children next to you. Um, one is a half drow with uh, an embroidered hairstyle. Another one is similarly enough a human uh, child, but she doesn't seem to have any emblems, no family names, nothing like the sort. She is nicely dressed, for, uh, but you can clearly tell she is not from here, likely an orphan from a separate city section or outside of the city. To your left, however, you can see that there's two children, likely siblings, but they seem to have frosted hair similar to icicles. Okay. Were those two some of the kids that were playing at that fountain in the other town? I only have so many kid tokens, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they looked familiar. Mainly, it's I remember this one. Yeah. Because she's the one that got knocked got knocked into the fountain by the uh, by the uh, bitch woman. She didn't get knocked in. She got shoved hard. Yeah. Um, but yes, I only have so many kid tokens. I'll get more. Kind of have Pete bounce around or roll around however he's getting around now. Uh, he's basically without rolling. Breaking stuff. And so I'm going to talk to the older kids. Uh, the older kids specifically um, are the girl with the jam toast, the drow the woman with the nice hat or the girl with the nice hat um and this one individual in the corner yeah i'd let because i know people wouldn't hurt them i'd let them play with beat more than likely he'll end up using his hit points to heal them do you see that some of the kids begin to surround him <laughs> Tell him to play nice. Um, so I'll start with Drow Kid. All right. Um, he looks towards you. He does have a knife. Um, currently whittling something. From what you can tell, it's another knife. Uh, yeah. Can I help you? Um, I spoke with Emma earlier. I. I mean, my friend there at the counter. We're looking into the disappearances that have been happening lately. Oh, you mean the kidnappings? Uh, yeah. Uh, try not to say this among some of the younger kids, but some of the people that go out at night go missing for a while. Some mostly don't come back, and those that do uh, generally have, if they had magic, ripped away from them. Or they miss uh, some part of their body, an arm, a leg, an eye. Hmm. Most of the time, though, they don't come back. So those are the lucky ones. I'm assuming. Sometimes, sometimes not. Mm. Um, have you seen anything else outside of that? Uh... My friend Tom was taken by one of them. I'm assuming there's more than one person because more than one person goes missing in the night. So it's probably some large group. I don't know. Um, the only other thing that I can tell you is that currently there is a little meeting going on in the back room. It's a private party, so they don't uh, allow anyone except for the hunters to uh, assist them. The hunters. Uh, some of the orphans that are skilled enough to be in the knight's order, but they aren't recognized as knights as they don't have proper lineage. So they call them the hunters. Basically cannon fodder to toss at things. <sighs> That's a little concerning, but... Um, it's not well, a great you. city. Yeah, I'm starting to see that quite a bit. Uh, thank you. Right. And... Uh, he does look towards you and give you the knife he was whittling. Here, you might need this. John then comes over. Hey, I told you not to make knives anymore. 
uh, takes that knife away from you, Morthos, and takes his knife away. Uh, soon after, he does take out another knife and begins to whittle again. Uh, John's fine enough. He just tends not to realize that I am technically an adult by human standards. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people still see me as a kid just because of the way I look at times or act, I guess. I mean, I'm 23, but I'm technically a child as a drow. <clears throat> If you want to be semantical. Either way, take care and thank you. Um, I'm going to head over to Ray and relay that information to her. All right. And then probably ask John about the hunters. Uh, you ask him about the hunters and he does basically correlate the same uh, description. Uh, however, he does go on to elaborate. Uh, some of the hunters themselves do get assigned to, um, well, not proper families, but families that take him in and properly take care of them and train them. Uh, some of them don't get picked up properly, and some of them don't get picked up at all. Uh, most of the time, though, if they are not picked up and become hunters, they are sent out to war. Mm. How, um, I will state, however, th maybe thankfully or unthankfully enough, they have been recruiting more guards in the city, so less have to become hunters, and, well, I'm grateful for that, at least, though I am not quite sure why they're recruiting so heavily. Well, there was that giant metal uh, bull we encountered earlier. Um... Did you, uh, I did hear about that, uh, from one of the children, but I did not expect you to be the same people. Uh, well, uh, he does hand you a cup of what appears to be alcohol, but you can smell it. It's not alcohol. You can feel a citrusy smell to it. Uh, he, uh, drink on the house then. I mean, obviously, of course, it was already on the house, but I mean, it's a gesture. I'll drink it. Uh, it is... It is a cider of... It's a cider. It's not alcoholic, but it is an orange cider. It's a good drink. Uh, it's just not actual alcohol. Uh, to be specific, John and Claire are the only ones that actually are allowed to handle the alcohol. Uh, but it's a good drink, and then John then states, um, the bull thing or the other mechanical monstrosities that pop out from time to time are fairly new but they've been hiring for about a good half a year now only recently have they been ramping it up though other mechanical monstrosities unfortunately the scientists do not uh, stick to one thing and sometimes it's not even mechanical so do you think they could have anything to do with the disappearances? Well, if some of the things that they're creating have to do with the missing individuals and body parts, it's possible, but I don't know. I've never interacted with any of their scientists. Hmm. Do you know anything about the creatures from the river i water in town i know they've been popping up recently uh roughly about two weeks ago uh but beyond that they only seem to circulate the waterways thankfully and unthankfully enough here we're basically isolated in a non-water zone it's unfortunately one of the great perks of not being wealthy here we also need to travel a distance to get water, though, so that's a problem. And how long now have people been disappearing for? Uh, according for the, according to the first time we've seen or at least witnessed it, uh, roughly two months. Yeah, they're taking people almost 
Is it daily now? Or all at night? Uh, unfortunately, it has become daily. So now you've had plenty of time to see our turning people into these creatures. Are there any particular parts of town that seem to be affected more than others? Hmm. I can't honestly say for certain, but some of the kids did mention that the canals seem to be a large section of where some of their friends go missing. Well, I say friends, but more the people that sometimes help them out. Give them a nice uh, meal here and there and give them a little bit of food and dr not drink uh, and spending money. The young man here, he told me that his friend just went missing recently. Yes, uh, Tom, I believe was his name. Um, another, well, uh, he does say he uh, points towards the drow that you pointed to. Uh, Lacken here uh, met Tom not too long ago. They seem to hit it off and they seem to be good enough friends. Uh, between me and you, maybe a little bit more, but uh, it didn't seem to last long as soon after he was lost to us. I'm not exactly sure what might have happened. But according to Lycan here, it, he fears the worst, and it's likely possible that the worst happened. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to make a promise I can't keep, but hopefully we can figure out what's going on here. Do you know if anyone else has been investigating this? The only people that I know that have been investigating this, or even bother to listen, um are the Knights and the Council of Five. The Council of Five is only a small platoon though, but the Knights uh, directed under the current captain. Uh, d -d 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 sorry, I need to look up his name. Uh, Mr. Flair Grimlatch is assigning a full squadron to that assignment but beyond that no one really else seems to care as most of them are vagrants or nobodies hmm. just kind of wander away now all right um while you wander away you do see that peep begins to consume this child as you then actually look, he's just giving him a big hug. You worry about him. Yes, I do. In your mental Thank stability. You. Get right here. Watch that for a moment and then turn and look at the wall down here. Yeah, all right. And activate one ability. Ghostly gaze. You gain the ability to see through solid objects to a range of 30 feet within the range. You have dark vision if you don't already have it. This special sight lasts one minute or until the concentration ends. As if you were concentrating on a spell. During that time, you you perceive objects as ghostly transparent images. Once you use this invocation, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Okay, Um, are you able to read lips? I don't know what I... I don't have that beat or whatever. Mm, go ahead and roll insight. You won't get everything, oh, but you might get something. You know this is my worst one. <laughs> you hear the woman speaking with the man in the mask, and you believe that these guys um, are the people attending them. Like the little people that the kids slash John has mentioned before. Um, unfortunately, that man does have a mask, so you can't read his lips or attempt to. But the woman does say some few things that you do pick up on, but not a good amount. You do hear daylight, twilight, lost, McCann, break. Uh, and the last word you hear is child. Children. Sorry, children. Children. I read it wrong. Calm down. 
Sorry, it was just too funny. Yeah, uh, those are the words you can make out. All right, um, I'll let that let my vision return to normal. Kind of doing it so no one sees me do it. Um, this girl sees you do it, but she doesn't care currently. She is uh, making a nice cup of tea. She's likely going to then serve it to the people that you're spying on. And go back over to Ray and explain what I saw. Okay. As you go over back to Ray, she comes over towards the door. One of the hunters answers it, takes the tea set, and then closes it. I'm going to oh. take a look at this book I got from Anna and see what is written in it. Well, first of all, it's written quite fancifully, um, but you do get uh, Lycan's interpretation because he was the easiest one to interpret. You get that information quite solidly. Some of the kids, however, have uh, made mention that they were scurrying about uh, in the area of where the... Um, Scientists mainly hang out, which are the canals, that's totally true, um, but they have a base there. Uh, sometimes the kids go over there, chuck stones, rocks, or whatever they can find, sometimes some dung, and just try to break windows, mainly because they're kind of bored and have nothing else to do. Um, luckily enough, some of the kids are able to move fast enough, and some of the other kids are able to make sure they don't get caught. However, sometimes some of the kids do get caught and then scolded after. They do get brought back to the orphanage, but uh, some of the kids uh, have taken note have taken note when they were captured of people, or at least what looks to be people in bags being brought into the site. So that's the new information you gathered. Uh, later on, however, some of the kids do take uh, to account when they were playing near the. Uh, guards tower that some of the guards were talking about the missing individuals however no one has really bothered to do anything apparently uh, based on the kids interpretation no one really cares about some of their friends going missing so um, based off of that Anna has interpreted that this might be just a puff piece to get people off their back because Hey, if I assign a team to, air quotes, go looking for these people, they can't complain. That's not to say that that's not happening, but it's possible that some of the people he has assigned don't care enough to actually do the job. <laughs> God damn it, Ray. Um, but beyond that, the kids do describe other people that have gone missing, but nothing, nothing new, or at least nothing useful. I'll just show that stuff to Morthos. All right. So pretty much just sharing notes. All right. Uh, and what you... I'll ray what I was able to perceive in that round. All right. Uh, while you do that, I'm going to take you to the church. I don't want to go to church, mommy. You chose to go here. I know. Yeah, so suck it up. Uh, I don't feel like going to church today, Dad. These two are in the wrong lair. Q. Uh, as you make way towards the church, you do see that Layla is actually waiting for you. Oh, uh, Q, it's been a while. How have you been? I've been good. I didn't see you there. She clearly saw you there. I was just speaking with... Uh, oh, I called him Tom, too. Uh, Ven, mm -hmm. Ven, how have been the kids? I'm single. So tell me then, you're still looking for someone? Um, not really. Oh, uh, that's too bad. Uh, come, Q. I have much to speak with you about. He, she then bows towards uh, this man here. Uh, she then looks towards you and goes, Oh, thank God you got here. I was just standing here and Ven was just speaking to me about his kids. Yeah. Uh, you can clearly tell she's lying. Yeah. I mean, my insight, yeah. <laughs> Passive insight, yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, um, why she was lying, you're not exactly sure, but she was lying. 
You can ask her. Probably fine. He just said he didn't have kids. Okay, never mind. Don't matter. Let's go. Huh. Well, I'm surprised you didn't ask me about that, she then states. But that's perfectly fine. I mean, I, I, is there a reason why you lied? No, I was just seeing what you would do. I mean, there's nothing really I could do. Nah. Uh, that's <clears throat> technically not true. Uh, she comes over here, bows to this man, and then continues to the north. Uh, to the left and north. Yes. Uh, while in here, Q, you do see the two people that were with her before, uh, just in the back of the room, and then other people just listening to a sermon. Uh, she does look towards you and then states, Oh, uh, tell me, how's, um, how's Rusty? I didn't see him with the rest of the group. Um, are you talking about the Warforged? Unless he was something else. Um, I, uh, took his place in the team. Uh, he is currently working out a workshop, uh, crafting things. Building things. Uh, when you said I took his place, uh, from the team, fr not from the team, uh, on the team, she was shocked almost about as if you were about to say, uh, he unfortunately di uh, died in the line of fire. Uh, but no, thankfully he, enough, uh, she... He's in, uh, Roanoke, uh, currently, uh, I'm assuming he's doing some kind of experiment. He, he talked a lot about that. Oh, uh, get to well, tell him I say hi. All right. Uh, she then looks towards you and then looks towards the individuals in front of her. You do see a very Asimar-like being with four wings on his back protruding. A uh, halo of fire on top of his head. Standing next to him seems to be an Asimar roughly the same age. A little bit younger. Uh, no, not Asimar. A tiefling about the same age, a little bit younger than Morthos. Okay. Uh, she then looks towards the angeled individual. And then she states, uh, Councilman, this here is the individual that you told me to help. Mm, right. Uh, tell me, young one, what can I assist you with today? Well, first off, uh... What did our dear old friend Mav say? Ah, uh, yes, the Ice Queen. She had interpreted your words and she then thus spoke. Deliver to me the one I seek and enter into a house of prosperity. Guide your light aiming towards her and I will guide the one I seek. In doing so, you then transpire and then enter a new domain. I will grant you some power, but not at all, as you have more to gain. That was her wording. I'm going to insight to see if I understand any of that. Okay. Can I use... No, I'm not going to. 18. Mm, it's perfectly fine. Um, He then does state, because he was actually to tell you the interpretation he got, and you can just use your insight to see how well he interpreted it. Based on what we've gathered, he she was looking into someone that was there in order to acquire their skills or possess them in some way. While we do need the strength from her house and domain of the Feywild, as the Summer Queen didn't want to help us, we agreed to it, but only on the terms as no one would be hurt, just simply exiled. In doing so, she acknowledged this, and we sent out to Layla and her team. We skewed the results a little bit, making sure that Layla was, sent, Layla was sent in case someone was trying to hide things from us. And thankfully enough, no one tried. Uh, going back to when Martha's lied. Uh, thankfully, however, she did not seem to want y you. So your house is perfectly fine. Well, I should say you are perfectly fine as you no longer seem to bear the mark. 
just the power. Mm, she wants my brother. This is what we have interpreted, yes. As you no longer possess her within you. Just simply the strength she provides to you now. You can interpret what he means, but I'm pretty sure you know what he means. She wants my brother. That and she's no longer possessing you. She's just giving you strength. Yeah. Which is likely what the whole tingling sensation and then no longer feeling it meant. Yeah. Uh, the tiefling then looks towards you and then simply states, uh, Father Yule, is she? Uh, no, my dear. Um, she is capable, but she is not the one we seek. Oh, um, all right. Uh, so they're a tiefling, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, he then goes back to you, uh, Q. Now tell me, what is it that you seek from us? Well, uh, Layla mentioned that I might be able to get some help. The group I'm with, we're currently investig going to be investigating these, uh, scientists we have a really work for, and it's not good. Hmm, I see. Hmm. If you're willing to make a formed contract while you're still in this domain, or if you're looking for a certain amount of time, we can assist this. But unless you're truly desiring to be here, we will have to send one of our agents to assist you and with them give you clearance. What would it entail if I do sign? If you do sign, you would have to uh, one, tithe to this church. Two, uh, in more ways than one, work with this church. And three, possibly, uh, being one of the five that we assign. I can't go into a description in that last part until you actually become part of us, I'm afraid. I'll sign. Mm, very good. Miss Layla did, however, state that you had companions. Or they'll be joining us in this uh, ceremony. Uh, no. Uh, Layla looks towards you, uh, shakes her head, and goes, oh, well, it's your choice. Uh, looks towards you. I don't think some of them want to be tied to the church. No offense. It's not what I was saying. Uh, she then states, uh, basically oh, no, shouting. I... <laughs> I plan on telling them what's going on. Or you can tell them now. And then she just I... leaves. Uh, she waves towards the uh, tiefling, though, and then heads out. I'm going to give me a second, Eel. Take your time. Click my watch and basically send out a uh, message telling everyone that I'm getting the quote unquote authority we're going to need. I mean, he did mention you can also just have one of their agents next to you. Basically. Yeah, but this is could help other things in the future. Potentially, if you plan to stay here. Or uh, if you plan to use their governance outside of the city. Yeah. Okay, does anyone respond? I'm Ray will say good luck with that. Uh, yeah, am I here i don't know if i am you i'm saying it through the watch oh, oh okay sorry sorry so you um, technically are okay. air quotes did you need something uh, no i was just letting you know i mean deal i didn't tell you guys and 
I'm trying to turn a new leaf of trusting you. Trust is earned. Do as you will. Yeah, I mean, it's your choice. Alright, I'll uh, meet up with you guys later. Uh, so you do that, uh, Yule then looks towards you. Based on the wording, uh, I'm assuming they will not be joining us. Correct. Right then. Uh, he does turn towards the tiefling, uh, and then he states, Now, child, uh, do keep in mind what you see and what you will hear. The ritual is long and tedious, but it is one that needs to happen. Uh... I got a quick question for you. Yes. I know I'm kind of newish. I've not really had much contact with the church before and everything, but I and I am also these. I I am tied to Helm. Is that a problem? It is not. The Council of Five works with all domains. However, okay. they. Uh, share better ties with some than others. Alright. I just wanted to let you know that I do have ties to the helm. Very well, then. Uh, the tiefling then looks towards you all. Um, so you're going to perform the ritual? Correct. Um, didn't you say you need a blood sacrifice? I do. However, we can... In this day and age, we have interpreted that sacrifice to be fruits and berries, rather than some sacrificial uh, animal or individual. It is simply barbaric, and we've managed to do without that. Luckily enough, many words can be interpreted properly. Think of how the Fae and their kind, even some of the gods, use the wording to get the things they want. Uh, he then goes on, almost in a tangent of... Uh, how wording can be used against you and for you. Uh, in the meantime... I have, I have uh, I'll, like, jump in and say, like, yeah, I, I had that, uh, with the map. She kind of took that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, things get prepared, and you'll basically be doing that for a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, Zold, what are you doing? Uh, leave. Unspeakable thanks to his wife. Potentially, yes. <laughs> uh, probably later at night. You were given uh, information or connections to the guard office, uh, the bishop estate, which you currently burnt to the ground. That's currently also uh, dripping with ice. You can go back to the Harbor Street. You can go to the Air Open Market, uh, the portal gate to talk with any individuals there. You know about the church, you know about the lab, but not its exact location, but you can scope it out. You can go to a bar, you can go to a shop, where Zen likely is. Um, I'll ask uh, Cerulean if she had more leads on her sister's location. Um, from what I'm aware of, that she's currently working at some type of bar or brothel, something with a B. Uh, let's start asking around them. I'm sure if she's related to you, we should be able to find her quite quickly. Sounds like a plan. Let's see here. I think the last place you guys were all together was the Bishop Estate. Yes. Da -da -da -da, bridge, portal, open air market, Bishop House. Copy and paste. Okay, and then copy and paste. Oh man, why is it taking so long to just paste? There we go. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say I could just drag my character token in. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you enter into the state, and there seems to be a lively enough crowd. Uh, while most of them are human, there are also non-humans, but. One in particular is being flanked by two guards, just not talking hit to him, but just keeping an eye on him, basically pinning him down to not being able to do anything.
What do you do? Um, turn to Cerulean. Um, so I don't see anyone with uh, too too related looking to you. Uh, maybe you ask the bartender. You go over to the bartender, and a uh, simple enough uh, woman looks towards you. She has golden locked hair, a red cowl adjacent to her, and some strange marks adorn her face. Not tattoos, but markings. Uh, she then looks towards you. Welcome to the H Hungry Grove. How may I help you? Uh, hi. Um, we're looking for a family member. Um... Oh, well, if they've gone missing, dear, I'm afraid they might have been uh, taken away. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we understand that she's uh, working as uh, a barmaid of some sort, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Any, um, any recent hires or um, perhaps a bit stranger uh, patrons of yours? Uh it's it's her sister. Anyone that looks a little bit like her, maybe. Uh, sorry, hon. I don't exactly know. Uh, anyone else? The only person I've hired recently was Priscilla. She then shouts out, "Hey, Priscilla! What? If you're done trying to flirt with that man, do you mind helping out?" Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, perhaps she can assist you. Uh, Priscilla does come over towards you. Uh, yeah. Uh, these men are. Uh, this man and woman are looking for someone specific. Uh, she resembles this one. Looks points towards Cerulean. Huh. No, none of my friends uh, that frequent bars n seen anyone her or like her. But uh, but what year? Uh, well, someone at least similar. Uh, what? Well, not looking, but with the same kind of eyes. Uh, went into a brothel not too long ago. Uh, they never came out of it, though, but it... Uh, I mean, it's not like I was there to do anything. I just went in there to have a drink. Her boss then states, You do realize you work at a bar, dear. I, I mean, that's different. Uh, um, Cerulean then states... Oh, wait, go ahead, Zul. Yes, uh, terrible cover stories aside, do you remember the name of the brothel? Uh, from what I remember, it was called the Hungry Died Inn. Thank you both for your service. Uh, and Zold will put out uh, two gold, one for each of them. In terms of Cerulean. At least we have a destination now, I. Yeah, but if she hasn't gone out, that's two things that possibly happened. One, according to the barmaid... Uh, bar well, owner here. Uh, right. Will hold up his hand. Uh, let's let's cross that bridge when we get there. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. It's best not to speculate on these things. Uh, Cerulean does press on her bracelet, but says nothing, just indicating that she is telling you guys something, but says nothing, and then releases it, ending the call. Uh, Zold, from what you can tell, she basically uh, stated she's still alive and continuing to hunt. Uh, so uh, Zold will go ahead and do the same, uh, but he'll speak uh, as he's walking out. Just or um, me and Cerulean are going to investigate a, um, a bit of a shady establishment. Um, we might not be able to speak, but uh, unless you stop hearing uh, check-ins from us, uh, assume the worst, uh, say once per hour, or if they get really fast. Um, on a side note, while you're there, since you might be able to get a little bit more information, me and Ray have found out some stuff. Look in, if you have the time, look into the disappearances that have been happening. They might have a little more information that, what, than what we've been able to obtain. Of 
course. Uh, she nods, but you obviously can't hear a nod. Uh, she then states towards Zog. So, shall we get going? Uh, or Let's... do you want to gear up with something? Um, I would like to repair my pistol, but uh, I do think time is of the essence, and it's for the best if we uh, make haste. All right. Uh, a little worried about this, she does continue to rest forwards. This is the close she's ever gotten, and whether whether she's still there or not is definitely concerning. Whether you're at well, whether you're at a, a orphanage run by children, also a bar <laughs> that houses weapons that are clearly open, or at a church currently maybe doing cult things, it's kind of hard to tell, really. Or going to a brothel on your date, your first date in town. One thing is certain, this path, well, it definitely got divided. Well, it, where will it intersect? We'll, we'll have to find out next time as we end the session for today. <laughs>